will find a sincere and close-knit relationship between doctors and the children of Palestine. The very best doctors coming from different parts of the world to help, treat, serve, and operate. I'm Rashad Darwish, and for two weeks I had the opportunity to see a glimpse of what a PCRF mission is all about. I witnessed doctors, nurses, and volunteers from all over the world unite for our Palestinian children. This is Palestine Children's Relief Fund Inside the Mission. Salfit Government Hospital is located 30 minutes outside of Nablus. A large group of parents and their children anxiously wait here to be screened by PCRF's oral surgeon team. No child will be left behind. They will be carefully screened and treated. <laughs> to Karam Hospital. A group led by plastic surgeon Dr. Randolph Smith will also screen each child in the waiting area. So, Doctor, just in general, what are some of the cases that uh, you're seeing today? Well, mostly we're seeing burn cases, uh, which is not unusual uh, in Palestine in that they uh, have open fires for cooking. And, and I think you, you guys have listened in on some of the histories where the children have pulled hot liquids over and uh, burn themselves. Uh, of course, we've seen some congenital hand problems, uh, children born with deformities of their hands. What you're about to see is graphic, and in many cases, very sad. It's another terrible tale of a Palestinian child caught in the crossfire of war. Ten-year-old Muhammad Sahad stepped on a landmine, suffering severe burns across his entire body. My heart cries for him. Through it all, young Muhammad tries to stay optimistic. PCRF extends its reach beyond the Holy Land. Meet 15-year-old Najud Bazel. She's from Gaza. In 2009, she suffered a serious head injury from Israeli bombs. Najoud had a shrapnel hit her skull, and it took a, 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 a good size of her skull off, and they lost it. So she didn't have the, the piece of the skull. And during the 2009 uh, Israeli invasion, she had, they actually had to stitch her up without anesthesia. She was stitched up and sent home. Um, to basically stop the bleeding. But when she came to the U.S. through PCRF, the doctor had to reopen the wound and put a, a titanium piece to cover the skull. So now it's fully closed. She, her head is safe and um, basically cured. Thanks to PCRF, the procedure was free, and her host family, Rania and Saad Sadak, took care of Najud as if she was one of their own. The, the result and the gratification that you get, and they do say that doing good is sometimes a selfish deed, and I truly believe that. So it, it, there, there is a selfish aspect to it because you, the feeling that you get is, is overwhelming. Is so. this your first time? This is my first time hosting a child, and mm -hmm. I will do it again. <laughs> you going to miss her? I will miss her, yes. After an intense day of screening, the surgeries begin. In a span of one week, at least 40 operations ranging from cleft lip procedures to facial deformities will be performed. Why is the surgery important for this young lady? What would happen if she does not receive a surgery like this? Well, she, her problem mostly was not physiological, it was psychological, because she thought she was ugly because in the, her school everybody tells her that his, her chin was not right positioned. So we are going to do this for her so she can feel better and she can improve in her studies because this has been affecting her life. So usually this type of surgery is what the main purpose is to change psychologically and physically. Each neurosurgery performed at Ramallah Hospital is sensitive. 
This is a, a five-month-old uh, baby boy who has a, a, a craniofacial condition called craniosynostosis or the metopic suture. As you can see, there is a pinpointing of the forehead and uh, the sutures are fused earlier than they should, so the brain growth is limited in that direction. So the idea of the surgery at this early age is, is to give a good chance for the brain to grow in a natural direction as well as uh, for cosmetic reasons as well. It's considered a high risk surgery because it's a high blood loss operation. It needs uh, intensive care monitoring, postoperatively so we've been working with the hospital the last couple of days on making sure we have uh, ICU beds as well as uh, uh, we're having blood available for blood transfusion after surgery, during surgery. For these children and parents, PCRF is the only way to get the treatment they desperately need and also the best way. We are basically helping the people who have no access. They have no access to money, they have no access to the outside world, they cannot travel and have their um, surgical issues resolved somewhere else. So those are the people that we help. We are trying to help as much as possible as the National University of Mexico. We start coming here just to help and now our main idea is to train local people and we are always training local surgeons and in Mexico we already have three Palestinian residents help. training in Mexico City to become an old surgeons and to come back to help. I've always been involved all my life and after a while you notice that the organizations that you're a part of are not making the change that you desire um, with PCRF, I did see that. I see it in the lives of children that they meet. I see it in the doctors that go to Palestine and, and cure and help children. So that's my main motivation, and I hope to be with them for a long time. I got to see just a fraction of how many children were helped, how many were treated, how many lives were saved. If they cannot get out, we should come here and help them. That's why we have come so many times, and we will keep on coming forever.